Well, good evening. The psalmist tells us that from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Here you are, to praise the name of our God, who has given us so many wondrous deeds, and through his Son, Jesus Christ, gives us the forgiveness of sins in this meal tonight. Thanks be to God for it. Uh, a few announcements before we begin this evening to kind of uh, keep things straight. Uh, this past week, uh, two letters were sent out to the entire congregation, uh, one on Monday, and then at council on Monday night, another one was uh, planned to be sent out, which was sent out on Tuesday. Uh, so look in your mailboxes, you won't be seen double, you will get two letters from us this week. I just kind of wanted to briefly cover a few of the important things on there. Uh, one, of course, of Pastor Darren's farewell. Next Thursday will be his final Thursday night service, uh, and Sunday will be his final service here. Uh, you, of course, see him, tag him, you know, he's been here 21 years. So many memories that have been made, uh, stop him. You know, tell, give thanks to God for the work that he has done in his service here uh, for all these years. Uh, Sunday after the final service, he'll be out in the garden here, and people who want to drive by, tag him down, talk to him, that'll be available. You know, it's hard to plan anything, meal or anything wise with COVID and everything like that. Uh, so this is the best we're going to be able to do to send him off. So write him cards, letters, you know, give him a call, uh, and share that thankfulness that we have for his years here. Uh, so that was on there. Another thing that's on the letter that was sent out, uh, the city of Marshfield randomly just came to us, and they said, are you guys interested in selling that land down there? Uh, and we said, well, we don't really have anything, but we will talk to the congregation. So here we are. Uh, whatever, if you have feedback, you do not want us to sell the land. You are saying, yeah, let's sell it. Tell us. Talk to us. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, whatever, it's just feelers. There's no vote. There's, uh, if we ever came to it, we would vote. But there's just right now, we just want to hear feedback. That's it. Uh, if it's even worth pursuing. Because they came to us, and so we kind of want to do dil due diligence on that. Um, you'll see our Facebook Live devotions that we've been doing. During September, we're going to take a month off as we kind of plan. With Pastor Darren leave, leaving, a lot of things have to be readjusted. And, uh, and then in October, we'll pick up some things and kind of restart uh, things and... God, God grant our country be better shape in that month, too. Uh, so that's coming up. Sunday School is virtual. Sign up. Uh, you know, that, that's also in there as well. All the information you need to know to sign up. Confirmation. Seventh grade confirmation inf information was sent out. I am now working on the eighth grade confirmation materials because depending on whether Pastor Darren stayed or left, uh, it was going to go one way or the other. And now that we know, I can kind of sit down finally and work through that. Uh, so for those in 8th grade, you're watching, hearing, uh, I'll get out to you as soon as I can uh, with that. Uh, other stuff that's on there, pastoral care, of course, we want to know what's going on with you guys. If you're in the hospital, something happens sick, uh, married, you know, whatever, good, bad, the ugly, the blessings, we want to hear about it uh, as your pastors. Uh, and we love you guys. I'm very thankful for that. Bible study, I do want to do a couple of in-person Bible studies. We'll do our due diligence with health watching and doing our with care about that as well uh, so but that'll be coming down the pipe as well so keep an eye out for that because uh, it's my job to feed you guys God's word and that's what I'm here for uh, and thanks be to God for that of course our Bible in a year is still going as well uh, so that was all in that letter finally um, after the council meeting on Monday night they wanted to be aware of certain things coming up so Pastor Darren wrote kind of a more fleshed out letter uh, the financial report, if you look at that, so that we, we weren't able to have our mid-year uh, congregational meeting. Surprise, surprise, we were short $58,000 on the year. Um, so take a look at that. Uh, adopt a bill, some ideas came out with that. If you're interested in sponsoring a bill, uh, let us know, uh, and things like that. Building fun stuff, some of the work that we're looking to do in the future, a lot of that's installed this year just because of, well, everything that's been going on. And all that good stuff, extra lots are mentioned on there as well. Uh, and a word for me as your pastor, it's tempting to see all this and freak out and act in fear. And if we act in fear, that is not how we, is not, that is not what we become as Christians. Uh, it's an opportunity to rise to the occasion. And we're all in this time of suffering, so it's good for us together to come together as God's people, and we'll get through it. And thanks be to God that tonight, he comes at us with his word, and with his gifts, because this is why we're here, guys. This is the whole purpose. Jesus Christ for you. Um, tonight, and that'll lead us, of course, into the sermon for tonight. I'm actually preaching a psalm tonight. Psalm 138. It's the first psalm I'm preaching here, and I'll try to paint that picture as best I can uh, and take you down that trail. 
So that's what we're here to do tonight. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds to hear God's word, to receive his gifts, and to call upon him in prayer and praise. And we will do that by singing our opening hymn, hymn number 612, As Rebels Lord Who Foolishly Have Wandered. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now. I'll read the psalm of the day. You may be seated for this. Um, The psalm of the day is also our text for our sermon. It's from Psalm 138. I give thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul you increased. All the kings of the earth shall give you thanks, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. 
For great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly. But the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. We continue now with the Kyrie. Please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let's pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ, and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings this night. Our Old Testament lesson this night comes from the prophet Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, that I might bless him and multiply him. For the Lord comforts Zion. He comforts all her waste places and makes her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation, for a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the peoples. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. 
Our epistle lesson this night comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 11th and 12th chapters. Paul writes, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we say the Alleluia and hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. We say together, Alleluia, you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated as we continue now with our sermon hymn, hymn number 912, Christ is our cornerstone.
friends in Christ, please be seated. My dear friends who are loved by God and seen by God and known by God by name. In Psalm 138, we read this. Though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty, he knows from afar. You know, if there is one thing that the Psalms have mastered, it's the ability to throw you, the reader, off guard. Many Psalms will begin by leading you down a path that you think you know the ending to. But suddenly, you find yourself whisked off the beaten path on a journey that you didn't think you wanted, nor one that you thought you needed. Psalm 138 is such a psalm. Psalm 138 grabs your hand and just pulls you along with it as it blazes a trail ahead of us on a journey that seems to just shoot everything around us up into the presence of God. And as we walk along the path, we appear to catch a glimpse ahead of us of everything that is noble and beautiful, dwelling in the presence of God, basking in all of his glory. And not only are our eyes treated to a most beautiful sight, but our ears just can't help but drink up the roar of praise that just drips from all creation to God. It's like hearing a waterfall in a densely vegetated trail. And every once in a while, you find yourself catching a glimpse of the cascading waters, but you can't miss the telltale sound of the waters clapping down on the, on the rocks beneath. In this psalm, we find ourselves surrounded by a cacophony of praise to God. And from what you can see and from what you can hear, you can't help but feel that everything around us is just being caught in an upward direction. Everything is just going up toward God. This feels like where the journey, where this psalm wants to take us, where it's all leading. On one side, we are greeted by the image of, of kings, right? these high and important people and mighty people, praising God as is right, because from their ears, they have heard the voice of God speaking. God has made his ways known. On the other side, we are told of the gods, the, the hosts of heaven, paying homage to this wondrous and holy God. The name, the God whose name and whose word is exalted, it's lifted up above everything else. The God of all heaven and earth, who is high, who is mighty, who is great, and who is glorious. What a fantastic vision of heaven that's imprinted upon our hearts and upon our minds in this psalm. You almost feel like a dog that's pulling hard at the leash, wanting to go on the walk, but only tires himself out with eager expectation of what could just be right around the next corner. What further sights and sounds can be found in this vision of glory? The leash tugging on your back as you try to get there faster than what the psalm is taking you. But as you read on, just as you round the bend where you think you will finally behold God's glory in all of its fullness, you find that that's not where the psalm wishes to take you. The psalm passes by this vision of glory as if it's only a detour along the way. And just like a child who fights against their parents holding their hand, we begin to struggle backwards. A desire burns deep within us because we want to stay up on the mountain with God. We want to ascend and be exalted with everything else. We want to take part in this vision of glory. But instead, the psalm leads elsewhere. The vision comes crashing down upon our heads as we find ourselves as low as we can be. We find ourselves laying smack down upon the face of the dust while the foot of the enemy is forced upon our necks. As we dwell in a land of trouble, as the trailheads and lush forests give way to dry deserts and parched wilderness, the psalm gives the impression that everything is moving upward toward God. But me, as I struggle, as I look upon myself to discover that I am not. And it's perhaps now, with these feelings of disappointment, 
we can feel what Peter feels as he rightly confessed in our gospel lesson today that the vision given to him by God the Father, that this is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And through him, God is going to reveal something glorious to see and to hear. But instead, Jesus takes Peter to a different location. Jesus causes Peter to ascend upon a mountain where there is a cross and where there is death and where there is suffering. And then he tells them that his suffering and death is what it means for him to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter is taken where he did not think he would go. Likewise, perhaps we know what it feels like to be Peter and James and John on the different mountain as Jesus is transfigured before him. Talk about a vision of glory, fair and beautiful. The three disciples find themselves on one side and upon another, surrounded by Moses and Elijah, these great and important people, and there before them is Jesus in all of his glory. And to add on this great sight, they hear the words of God speak, the Father, to hear the ways of the Lord, the way, the truth, and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ who stands there before them. This is my beloved Son. And with fear and trembling, they bow down, but they're taken somewhere else entirely. There before them stands just the same old Jesus, wearing the same weathered clothes and the beaten sandals, and tells them to, let's go down off the mountain. We've got to go somewhere else. Perhaps now, with a feeling of crushing loneliness, we can begin to feel what it was like to join with the apostles as they watched the Lord Jesus ascend into heaven while they were stuck on earth. Can you imagine that? A glimpse of glory. They see his resurrection. They, they touch and they hold him. Don't you wish you could do that as well? I do. They join in the presence with shouts of, Alleluia, my Lord and my God. But just as they think that this is the moment of glory, this is where it's been leading them, Jesus is caught up. He's been exalted, and lifted up. But they don't join him. And all we can do is crane our heads up there with him as long as we can to keep him in our sight before it's all whisked away, and our eyes come cascading down to earth, separated and far from God, and hearing the angels say, why do you stand looking into heaven? We think we know where this is all leading us, don't we? We think a path towards glory, success, riches. We mistakenly believe that life is about going up, about us making our way to God, that we're on a path, a ladder, a mountain, and we assume that it means that we need to work our way up toward God. And it tempts us to believe that there are some of us who are closer than others. We, knew, we know better, of course, but we just can't help it, can we? We all want that picture of glory for ourselves. How many times have I heard the comment that, well, you must be closer to God because you're a pastor? How many times have I heard from friends and family, oh, you're a holy man. How many times have I heard that God, oh, he hears your prayers because of what God has called me to do, which assumes, by the way, that God doesn't hear their prayers. How many times have I been tempted to believe those thoughts myself? Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Psalm 138 does not lead us to glory. Psalm 138 reminds us instead of the experience of grace. The glimpses of glory are trumped by God's unfailing love that he never lets down his people. The glory leads to grace, not the other way around. Glory makes us think that it is up to us to get up toward God, to ascend to him. But grace is how we learn that God comes down to you. It's natural to want to be sucked into a desire to ascend before God, but it's just not how it works, my brothers and sisters. That's not where we are led. Psalm 138 tries to keep us down. It lowers us back into trouble, back into weakness. Talk about all the struggles that we face this year into hardship, because it is only in these lowly spots that we encounter something far more greater than glory. It's there, in the muck, in the humiliation of defeat, that we experience 
God's grace and God's love for us. We discover that it is in weakness that we find God's strength, not to make us strong in our own regard, in our own sake, but strength to increase our dependence upon God's working in our life. Right here, brothers and sisters. On the day I called, the psalmist says, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. We find that it is God's grace that is really his glory. It is God's mercy that is exalted. It is God's love that causes his name and his word to be glorious. You know, the higher you try and go, the harder it will be for God to see you and to know you and to love you. That is what the prayer from Psalm 138 leads us away from. It leads us away from glory and instead into the arms of grace. Because though the Lord is high, exalted, lifted up above everything else, he regards the lowly. That is what defines God's glory. By comparison, the haughty, the self-actualized, the self-assured, the proud, the arrogant, who think they are high, God knows them from afar. He can barely see them. The first are last. The last are first. The way we think about glory does not lead us to God. And this psalm teaches us rather to look for God's grace. It teaches us to pray for God's kingdom to come to us. This psalm leads us to and teaches us to look for Jesus Christ, the one who forsook glory and humbled himself to be born of a virgin, who, out of love for you, forgives sins and shows grace. If you want glory, go find it somewhere else. But be warned, God won't see you. Rather, seek lowliness. You'll find it in your neighbor who's despised. You'll find it in your love for one another here as we transition. You will find God by grace. Then, you will know what it is like for Jesus to tell Peter to have the things of God in mind. And it is for God to stoop down into our mucky brine and to forgive us our sins. To have God by grace alone. Then you will know why Peter, James, and John felt like when Jesus comes to them after he is transfigured and he touches them, raises them up, and says, do not be afraid. He comes not for glory, but for grace. Then you will know why the angels look at the disciples as they crane their heads looking into heaven for glory and they bring their eyes back down to earth and tells them that this Jesus who is exalted and lifted up to heaven, guess what? He will come back down to you. Psalm 138 leads us past the paths of glory and into the valleys of grace. And that is something far better to look forward to. It is worth all of the parched lands, all the cross-laden hills, all the sufferings that we endure, all the trouble we've seen. And it is here that Psalm 138 finally leaves us at a surprising destination. Though our paths walk through the midst of trouble, God preserves our life. That's grace. Psalm 138 leads us to our God who stretches out his hand against the wrath of those who hate us. God's hand stills the hand of the avenger. That's mercy. Psalm 138 delivers us into the hands of Jesus Christ, who is at the right hand of God the Father, whose purpose is to never forsake you, whose steadfast love endures forever. That's peace. In the end, Psalm 138 leaves us in the ground. It leaves us with the dead, the forsaken, the hated, the maligned, those who have paid the price for sin and those who are far from God. And the psalm leaves us at the end of the day with a desperate plea, a prayer, not for glory, a prayer for grace. Do not, O oh God, 
forsake the work of your hands. The image that is being pictured here is what God did to Adam. That from the dust of the earth, from the place where we right now leave our dead, that there, in this most least expected place, a glorious God shows grace. He stoops down with his own hands to bring forth life, healing, restoration to all who look to Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, I implore you, search not for glory that fades away. Search instead for God's supreme grace that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and for which you and I are sealed in the waters of holy baptism with. And what you will find again today at the end of my fingers as I give to you the grace and love of your God. Take, eat, take, drink. The body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This is an extension of grace. One that God offers you again tonight for the sake of his steadfast love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Let us now confess our faith in our God who has done such a mighty thing for us. Using the words of the Nicene Creed, please stand as we confess that faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please join your hearts with me now as we pray for all people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people everywhere according to their needs. Dear God and the Father, we give thanks that through your Son, Jesus Christ, you've come to us in grace. And Lord, we look upon you now and ask that you fulfill the promise of your word, that it grants us the forgiveness of sins and life eternal in your name. Lord, we ask that you be with this congregation here in Marshfield at Christ Lutheran. You be with all of our people, that they may hear your word with gladness and respond with kind and generous hearts, loving you and loving their neighbor as themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you to be with all the churches throughout the earth, scattered and abroad, that you be with them, especially in these trying times, that you grant all pastors faithful hearts to preach your word, and grant us all your Holy Spirit that we may hear learn, mark, and inwardly digest your word given to us for the sake of your Son. Lord, we ask that those people, those Christians who suffer from persecution, will be kept safe, that their witness may abound, and that the number of Christians may increase. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you be with our country and all those who lead us, for our President, Donald Trump, for our Governor, Tony Evers, and for all of our local magistrates and all those who make and decide our laws that you be with those who enforce them, that you be with us and all that we do, that we may have a peaceful and quiet life, loving and our neighbor and serving them. Lord, in your mercy. 
Be with those who are often forgotten and invisible, the unborn, the elderly, those who are immigrant, those who are often bound by sicknesses, and those who are often abused. Lord, we ask for your mercy, for strength for them, and for voices to speak on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you be with us as a congregation as we transition now, that you be with Pastor Darren as he now moves his call to Beatrice, and Lord, we ask that you be with his family to grant them peace and comfort in these times. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up, we give thanks for the weather this year, for our fields and for our lands, that crops may be raised and harvested, that you bless all those who work our lands and care for us by feeding the world on your behalf. Lord, we also lift up to you those who are sick and those whom we love in this congregation and those whom have asked for our prayers. Lord, we ask that you be with them in all of their needs, answering their prayers better than we can ever ask, knowing that it is the spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, who cries out in us, Abba, Father. Lord, in your mercy. Father, deliver us from all evil, both now and forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. We continue now, brothers and sisters, with the sacrament of our Lord Jesus Christ as he comes to us to bring us his goods and to forgive us his sins as he comes physically to you this night. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks to your praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and we will continue by singing the Agnes Day, the Lamb of God.
pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with our closing hymn, hymn number 680, Thine the Amen, Thine the Praise. Amen.